Good afternoon and welcome to the Inspiring Inkin Facebook page and welcome to the Inspiring Inkin YouTube channel. I'm Amanda Fowler. Today is Tuesday the 22nd of March 2022. Thank you so much if you're joining me live and thank you so much if you are watching the replay. The first 20 minutes or so will be chatting, <laughs> random chatting about the world in general. Um, and maybe a little crochet chat this morning or this afternoon. Um, and then after that, I'm going to be sharing with you some really beautiful papers from the January to June mini catalogue and a kimono card. So um, I hope you will stay around to watch that. So if you're here and uh, watching live, can you leave me a comment? Let me know where you're joining from. Can you see and hear me clearly? And if you're watching the replay, do comment as well. I do reply to them. So thank you so much for taking the time to do that. Of course, all of the products that you're going to see today, you can purchase in my online store. So there'll be clickable links, YouTube, Facebook, and on my blog, depending on where you're watching it, if you want to get your hands on the products that I'm showing. Wow, all of a sudden, <laughs> there's a great big long flurry of messages. <laughs> Sometimes I think it's like Facebook and YouTube kind of store them all together and then let them loose. Um, if you are watching live on Facebook, can you give this um, post a share? So there's a little arrow and you can click share and what happens is it goes, it, it, move, it, it shares this video on your page. And it means then that more people get to see what we're chatting about and the crafting. And hopefully we'll get some new people to join our crafting community and to hang out with us. So let's see who is here. Um, Marion's here. Perth in Western Australia is here first. Good morning for you, Marion, I think. Or good evening. I don't know. You, you're ahead of us, aren't you? So good evening, probably. Um, Jen is here. Good to see you too. Anne, apparently it's sunny in Suffolk. Uh, sunny in Calgary. Good morning, Deborah. Patricia is in Oklahoma. Hello. Chris and Angela in Newbury. Yeah, and sunny as well. Seems to be sunny everywhere today. Good afternoon, Sue. Hi, Anne and Margaret. Warm and sunny in Oxfordshire. It feels warm coming through the <laughs> through the window. I haven't been outside today. I seem to say that every week. I must get better at <laughs> getting outside during the day. Um, Brian and I go for a walk every evening. Um, so I do actually go outside, um, but just generally not in the morning. Karen's here. Scylla's here. She's got sunshine too. Hello, Joanne and Donna. She shared the video. Thank you so much. Good morning, Stella. Yeah, it's evening for Marion. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't realise that. North America's behind us and Australia's ahead of us. Um, hi, Michelle and Julie and Claire. Sunny in Buckinghamshire as well. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So how are we doing? What What is happening in your world at the moment? Have you got anything exciting to tell us? Anything to share? Have you been out and about? Um, have you been crafting? If so, what have you been crafting? Um, we did a bit of gardening at the weekend. So let's see if I can remember. I'm going to have to imagine the garden and kind of go round. We've got Charlotte potatoes in, garlic's in, chives are in. Leeks are just about finished. Shallots are in. Tomato seeds, cucumber seeds, pepper seeds. 
everlasting rocket, normal rocket, normal lettuce, beetroot, oh, and sorrel. Now, I, <laughs> for the, I, I'm sure I've talked about this before, but a long, long time ago, um, I was in catering. Um, I'm a chef and a hotel manager and all, all that kind of hospitality stuff. And I remember sorrel from my training and it's like a lemony leaf that you can put into salads, but it's really strong. Um, and I, I saw it in the like heritage seeds kind of thing, but I've never used it, never cooked with it. So if <laughs> you are um, somebody who uses sorrel, let me know. Let me know what I can do with it. Um, and I'll share with everybody. Um, so Donna's saying it's boring. <laughs> it's boring here. Why is it boring, Donna? Um, she's only getting a small amount of crafting done, but hope to get more done tomorrow. You see, crafting's good for the soul. It's good um, to do that. Yeah, so I don't think, I think that's all the seeds. I've planted my marigolds as well. The rhubarb's coming up. Yes. Oh, I love rhubarb. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, no sign of the asparagus yet. Um, normally that's sort of mid-April. So we've got probably another three or four weeks yet. Um but yeah, but the, <laughs> the tomato seeds and the stuff, they're all on the window ledge in, in the spare room and they're really, really growing well. So um, hopefully we'll get them transplanted out to the greenhouse and, and done over the next few weeks. E I even cut the grass this weekend. Normally Brian cuts the grass. Um, but yeah, I cut the grass. We've got a, um, an electric mower which is really light, so um, it's got ba uh, it's battery powered, say electric, most of them are electric, but it's battery powered, so there's no wire. I have been known to run over the, run over the lawnmower wire, so it's not planned, but now we have a lawnmower without a wire, so that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> hello, Janet um she's saying hello to everybody rosie's in sunny andover mum's here so that's pauline to everybody else <laughs> um lovely and sunny in sutton on sea again um margaret went to an art exhibition last week in oxford how exciting was it was it all paintings or was it sort of you know other creative things and Barbara's here from sunny France. Hello, hello, hello. So lots and lots of people popping on. Um, so what else have we got, Silly? So we did all of that. I have been crocheting a lot. And yes, that was the, <laughs> there was something important I needed to tell you. Um, a few weeks ago, I mentioned that I haven't been very well. Um, and I've been, you know, having tests and various other things. Um, I just want to report that all the biopsies and everything have all come back and they're all fine. Um, I'm still not 100%. Um, so as a consequence, I am kind of trying to take it a little bit easier um, and, you know, get my strength back, get, get fighting fit again. Um, so, yeah, thank you for all your messages. Um, and hugs in the emails you've been sending. So you are wonderful. Um, I say this often. The reason I continue to do the job I do is because of all of you. Um, so thank you for being awesome. Um, so as a consequence of me trying to take it a little bit easier, I have been doing a lot of <laughs> crochet. <laughs> So, um, yeah, most evenings I sit there and do do some crochet. Um, so I thought I would show you some of the things 
that I've been making, well, two of the things I've been making. Um, so for those of you, <laughs> those of you that don't know and are watching this going, Amanda, you teach stamping and paper crafting and, and papery things. Yes, I do. Um, that is that is my job and my passion and absolutely. But also in my downtime, <laughs> I crochet. And I am kind of self-taught. Mum tried, mum helped. Um, and I've attended like a couple of lessons, but most of it is kind of YouTube and me kind of figuring it out on my own. Um, so I don't, I don't crochet the same way as anyone else, I don't think really. Um, but I also, I, I just love it because I can't think about anything else when I'm crocheting because I have to concentrate on what I'm doing. So it's actually for those of you um, that are looking perhaps to add something into your world, um, crochet is good for that because it really, you concentrate so you can't, you know, if you're stressed, you can't concentrate on, on the stress because you have to concentrate on the stitches. Um, so anyway, so I will be doing another crochet along. So I haven't yet decided when I'm going to do it. And the thing is, that's one of the reasons that I'm trying to explain that I'm trying to take it a little bit easier. What I don't want to do is put too much pressure on me to get a crochet along sorted out. So I think realistically, it's going to be the tail end of April. It's going to be another month, maybe even the beginning of May. But there will be one. It will not replace our Tuesday afternoons. I'll add it into a different day of the week. Um, but just if you're waiting, it's coming. But there's so many things I want to make and I want to make with you. So, um, yeah. So let me show you. So... I make things <laughs> to patterns that I find. And then I go, right, okay, so actually I need to change that. So this is the first thing I'm going to show you. And I, lo I love this, but it's too wide. So this is, let me show you. This is a headband. It's called a twisted headband. And um, so it's basically crochet. It's you crochet a rectangle, let me show you, crochet a rectangle, and then you fold over the ends and stitch them together like uh, like that, and then it magically makes this twist. I'm going to put it on. I'm going to take my glasses off and put it on, um, and you'll see why it's too wide. Look, look at the cool hair. Um, so this is this is kind of my 19 my 1950s kind of you know have a penny and 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 go on so i you know i do love it every time i put this on it's so cozy and it's really cool round your ears but i think it's just a bit too wide so there you go oh so that's a head warmer and then this, I don't know how I'm going to get this in the, in the shot. This da, 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 is a triangle scarf. And I don't know if you can see, it's kind of, it's got glittery bits in it. I made up that little border there, look. I actually designed that. I knew what I wanted and I fathomed out how to, what order to put the things in. Um, but I I really like this. I've never made anything that's like this lacy. So it's very cool. But it, obviously, it's not going to go with what I'm wearing. But it kind of goes around whoo, like this. And, you know, tuck it in there. It's not big enough to kind of go of my shoulders um it's not like a it's not like a sort of summary well i suppose you could do because it it will cover you 
a little bit, but it's it's not huge, but it's very cool. So there you go. So I have been busy as well as designing <laughs> all of the craft along projects and the team craft along projects, and I've been filming videos and all sorts. So there's been plenty of paper crafting going on, but I thought you might like to see those crochet things. So let me just, I've got to fish my tea bag out, but otherwise the peppermint tea is going to be stewed. Um, and I have a few things to show you. Let me just... So, I'm Donna is here. Now, you might remember we were talking about crochet a few weeks ago and Donna um, got a blue ribbon, I think it was, Donna, and you, um, your project got put forward to state. And this is what she made. Look at that. That is so cool. Isn't that amazing? So delicate, really beautiful. So that's good. That's, that's amazing, actually. And then, um, a new customer of mine, a lady called Lynn, sent me this picture she found my email my emails my videos for the any size gift bag and if you search on youtube for inspiring ink in any size gift bag i've got two videos and my most popular videos and she found me and started making the bags and look at them all <laughs> she's been making isn't that amazing? It's been so busy um, prepping all those bags. So um, now I've worked out how to be able to show you pictures on my iPad. Um, if you want to send me pictures, you can email me. Let me just put my email address up just in case you don't know. Um, it's amanda at inspiringinkin.com. So send me an email, attach your pictures, um, obviously, you have to let me know that I'm allowed to share the, the pictures. Um, if you're ever taking pictures to send me, do try and make sure there's plenty of light, um, as otherwise it just doesn't show up on the camera. So it needs to be kind of well lit. Um, okay, so let's just take that away. Oh, and the Amanda Inspiring Inkin, if you want to go on my email list, you can send me an email there as well. Let's go back to the comments. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Margaret is trying to learn crochet at the moment. Hello, Anita. Buon, buongiorno. Mm. Not entirely sure my Italian's very good, Paul. But hi <laughs> paul's journey is from italy um roz is here um and is asking me what yarn i used so i think this is landscapes lion brand landscapes um i what i'll do is i'll put a link in the video description on youtube and i'll put it in the on my blog post um yeah i'm fairly sure it's lion brand landscapes it's really really soft and it's uh it's a variegated obviously um this <laughs> this yarn is yarn i've had for ages and it's from a company called ice yarns um they're in turkey and um, they, they're like a wholesaler, but you can order from them. It's a bit of a minefield. Um, and it is one of the things that I was going to um, ask you guys about as well, actually, whether you would be interested 
in crochet yarn type videos and that kind of thing that kind of content um it, it's never going to take place take the place of all of my paper crafting um but every now and again i can always add in um a bit of a bit of yarny yarny goodness um so jan saying she loves it all as is Roz. <laughs> thanks jackie she's saying good afternoon to everyone Oh, and saying that she bets it would work as a neck warmer. Yeah, I think it would actually. Yeah, it would. Um, but this this bit is quite lumpy because you've got four layers of stitching. So I think you'd probably have to make it a bit a bit longer. Oh, there we go. Uh, da, da, da. <laughs> Chris is saying at least two people would join if I did the turquoise shawl for the crochet along. Actually, um, this is this pattern. Um, it, there is um, a YouTube tutorial for it. Um, I'll put the link in in the description. So and um, the late it's really lovely the the work that the lady does and it's really straightforward so it's actually um three row repeat so you've got this row here which are all chains then another row of chains and then a row of trebles um and that's <laughs> that's another thing actually i've discovered i am bilingual in crochet so um there's american terminology and there's uk terminology and they are different but it doesn't seem to matter i can crochet either and i know that sounds really silly but for me it's a revelation because my linguistic skills leave a lot to be desired i can order food beer find the toilet the police station um, and a taxi in probably a dozen languages, <laughs> but that's all. Oh yes, and saying hello and please and thank you, obviously, and how much is it? Um, but yeah, in a lot, in a lot of languages, but more than that, no. I cannot hold a conversation with anybody in any language other than English. It's on my list of things I need to learn. Um, So lots of love for Lynn's bag making. Lots of people have made those bags already. Yeah, and it's it's a great video just to go back to and look at. Um, Anne saying, yes, she's interested in yarn things. And Roz is saying, yes, please, to crochet videos. Yeah, please do them when I can. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Hello, Lorraine. Apparently, it's warm and sunny in pool awesome right so i'm gonna have a slurp of my tea but i'm gonna ask you a question so tomorrow stamping up are launching the annual catalog so the catalog that you will be able to order from from the 3rd of january no <laughs> 3rd of may so it's replacing this one okay so we get to see it, demonstrators get to see it. This is a good reason why you need to be demonstrators. But demonstrators need to see it. We'll see it tomorrow. And Stamping Up have been teasing us for the past week about the new in colours. Now, you all know that these colours are leaving. It's making me very sad which is why we're using them in this month's craft along. So these colors here are leaving. Cinnamon Cider, Just Jade, Bumblebee, Magenta Madness and Misty Moonlight. They are going. So I currently know four of the five new colors coming. 
Would anybody like to see them? Very briefly. Let me know in the comments while I drink my tea. Because, you know, if you don't, if you're not interested and you don't want to see them, then that's fine. If you just want to, you know, be surprised. I am a little bit excited. And you'll, you'll know why as soon as you see them. <laughs> so, okay. So the, the messages are coming in. <laughs> There's all sorts of yeses coming in. Right, let me see. So, <clears throat> okay, so do you want to see? Yes, you do. Okay, so here they are. Here are the four that I can tell you. So, this one is called Starry Sky. Then Tahitian Tide. Parakeet party, that's the green. And actually on the screen, it looks quite yellow, but it is it is a real lime green. And then sweet sorbet. So it's the background colors that you can see as opposed to the images. Two blues, two blues, two blues. It's kind of getting me over the disappointment of Misty Moonlight going. Look, look. Oh, hooray, hooray, hooray. Um, the starry sky, it could be considered purpley. So until I actually see it in the flesh, it's kind of a purpley blue. But I'm excited. I am excited. Um, but these are, so if I hold it back a bit, that might help. Um, these are really, I would call them juicy, <laughs> juicy colours. They're really kind of, yeah, really saturated. Think bright coloured Smarties or, yeah, yeah, jelly beans, brightly coloured jelly beans. So it's kind of the color um so yeah so but there's one more color to be released which we don't know yet um and that'll be released tonight um so they give us a clue and then they re release it but when they release it i'm asleep so <laughs> i won't see it till tomorrow morning um, but yeah, it's very exciting. Um, so, you know, you will see, I will go through all of the colours and everything like that when um, a bit closer to the time, because, you know, we've got we've got weeks, weeks yet. Um, and I know I'm going to get a few questions. So as I've said to you, this book, oh, this book is finishing on the 2nd of May. So tomorrow evening, that's all, Wednesday evening, 23rd of March at 7 p.m., go to my online store and go shopping because the retired list will launch. There will probably be discounts, there normally are, and it will be items from this catalogue that are leaving. I will be manning my emails, sending out stuff, sending out PDFs and all sorts of things so that you can get all the information as soon as I have it. Um, but obviously the fastest way, always the fastest way to see what's available is to go to my online store. Um, so this one is finishing. This one, whoop, this one, is carrying on till the end of June. So don't worry, you'll still be able to get the stuff that's in here. Okay, and I'm sure the next question will be, oh, when am I going to get my catalogue, Amanda? So I send them out the second or third week of 
April. Obviously, there's Easter in there somewhere. Not entirely sure where, <laughs> where it is. It's very confusing that Easter moves. Um, but anyway, so it will, yeah, it will depend, um, you know, where I am and what I'm doing. So, um, but you will have catalogues in the, your hands before they go live in May. Um, Donna's saying she probably thinks the last colour is yellow. Yes, I think it might be yellow. Um, I think it might be like a real acid lemon drop, lemon sherbet yellow. That's that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Um, but I'd actually really like a proper candy floss pink. Um, rather than a soft pink at the moment, the pinks that we've got are either really vibrant and we've got a vibrant pink in there or they're quite muted and I want like a candy floss pink. Brilliant. Thank you, Janet. Right. So Easter Sunday is the 17th of April. Thank you. So it will be, they will go out in the post the following weekend. Um, so they will arrive the last week of April. Okay, good. Right. So last week, I showed you this lovely card that Michelle made for me. Um, it's called a kimono style card. And she made a little bookmark for me. And let me just cover cover that bit over. Um, and it, it kind of opens and then you write inside. So um, Marion um, sent me a link to a video after the after the live. Um, thank you, Marion, um, to a stamping up demonstrator from the US called Donald Chevsky. And she made um, a variety of this in, I think it was 2011. Um, and sort of as, as I've kind of looked through YouTube and various other places, um, I've seen quite a few other variations. Um, and obviously, I've got Michelle's, <laughs> which she made this for me. So what I've done, kind of what I always do, is I've tweaked around with the sizing and the measurements so that it would perfectly fit in a standard envelope for us. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to make today um i'm going to show you some papers though first so i'm going to stop my camera oh this all this paper out um da, da, da. So, can you hear me still? I've switched the sound off. Let's see. Move my scarf out of the way. Um, Marion's saying that she wants the last colour, the last in colour to be an orange. Yeah, I wouldn't mind an orange either. Um, yeah, Karen's saying no more pink. She's not a pink fan, are you, Karen? Okay, so I am going to show you this awesome paper. And actually, I don't know whether you know, but I do a craft along with my team every month. So I do one with my awesome customers, but I also do one with my team. And it's different projects. And this month we're using this paper, which is the Symbols of Fortune. And it is on page 23. Now, this is the product suite for it. And it's very oriental in its design. It's very muted. There is no blue. 
up in this paper. No blue. Um, and I'm sorry if if you don't know what I'm talking about. I love blue. Blue is my favourite colour, and yeah, it makes me sad if something's not got blue in it. Um, but the stamps and the dies just didn't do it for me. <laughs> it just they um, they didn't call to me, and there's so much in the catalogue that does that I didn't buy them. But the papers are beautiful. So um, I'm going to show you the papers. And I hadn't realised that the papers have gold dragonflies on them. Now I knew, if you, if you look at the stamps, the stamps actually have dragonflies in them and they have dyes. And normally, you know, that's my logo. Normally, if something has dragonflies in it, I would automatically buy it. But it, it, yeah, I don't know. It didn't call to me, but the papers are stunning. So I'm just going to show you the papers. Um, and I'm not sure, actually, whether I've got a full sheet of everything. I don't think I have. Um, so this is the first one. These are beautiful chrysanthemums. And then you've got this, it's like a marble effect, but you can see the gold foil, but it's lots of shades of gray and gold foil. This one is beautiful. These are cranes. There are teeny tiny little dragonflies there. And then the other side has got foiling. I don't know what kind of a flower this is. Does anybody know, or is it a leaf? Somebody knows, let me know. You've got the cranes again, this time with golden wings, but then look at these amazing gold butterflies. And it's white and, and grey. And then a really lovely kind of floral sprig. Oh, it's a ginkgo, says Doris. Thank you. Lotus leaf, says Karen. Interesting. I don't know. This looks like it's a um, watercolour wash. And then the reverse. I love this. This is like um, cotton puffs. Have you ever seen a... Um, I, again... <laughs> my my gardening knowledge is quite limited um and this is yeah i don't know what this is either so if anyone knows what that is that'd be really cool then this look cranes in flight and a beautiful sky and then again you've got trees and leaves there and then this is bamboo see i can rec <laughs> i can recognize bamboo and then this looks to me like cow parsley and i appreciate it won't be unless there is an oriental version of cow parsley but that's what it looks like to me so really really beautiful um So I think I'm going to be using that one. I need my trimmer. I have ooh, whacked the camera. So sorry if that's making you seasick. Oh dear. Um, right. So I have the measurements. So let me just um i am really sorry that there is a two and an eighth measurement <laughs> um but i couldn't make it work 
um, any other way. Okay, so let's pop that there. So um, I have actually made a template out of cardstock, which is always a really good plan to do. It's actually quite hard, though, because of the score lines involved. But it is just a single sheet that is scored to make. Let me just pop that back out. It's scored to make a gatefold. Then you cut, which makes the sleeves. And then you score down and those pieces get popped inside, which is how it makes it narrow. And then you just fold these pieces down. So it's so straightforward. So let me show you, this is actually what we're going to make. Let me move that out of the way. Um, and you can, so you can see that you've got this pleating piece here. Now, can you see that that's kind of, um, pulled out a little bit? I've done that specifically to make sure that it will stand up because, you know, you want a card to stand up. It's got a little belly band on it. And then you open it up and you've got somewhere to write inside. If you want something, if you want to be able to write more, you could, of course, put um, something on the back. But it's so beautiful. These papers are amazing. So, you know, do, please get those get those papers so let's do the measurements so i'm not actually sure whether this is going to be big enough <laughs> oh yes it is so your measurement is eight and a half by who five and three quarter inches if you're working in centimeters it's 22 centimetres by 14 and a half. You're then going to score it at two and one eighth of an inch. Um, let me just pull that in. Let's bring this up. So it's just there. So two and one eighth. So find two and a quarter and it's between two and a quarter and two. So you're going to score it at two and an eighth. Make sure you're using your scoring blade, not your cutting blade, and just give it a score. Now you can flip it over and score it again, but this is a gatefold card and you want it to join you want these two pieces, so here, look, you want them to be touching. So the best way to do this with a gatefold card is to fold it over. So not actually do the score line, but fold it over so it's touching. And then squish it and form your crease. And that way it will always butt up butt up properly. So whenever you're making a gatefold, always do that. So just score one side and then do the other. Okay. So that's your gatefold bit. Now what we've got to do is we've got to cut this piece. So it's going to be cut three quarters of an inch at one and three quarter inches. I'll explain that in a second. Or cut two centimeters at four and a half centimeters. So 
these trimmers are awesome and if if you work in inches, then you can use the track that comes with your trimmer if you're in the UK. If you work in centimetres, you can get a replacement track, a replacement one of these. So in the annual catalogue, let me show you. Doo -doo. There you go. So it's there, look. <laughs> it's there, look. It's a clear ruler. Of course, you can see it. It's on page 151. That's just stupid. Why am I trying to show you a clear track? Anyway, it is item number six. <laughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> <coughs> I'm so sorry. That's just a crazy thing to say. Um, so it's item number six. It is £3.75. And basically, you just get hold of your trimmer and you just pull these pieces out. Famous last words. You just pull these out like that. And then you just put the, put the new one in. So don't struggle if you work in centimeters get a replacement track 375 they are so regardless whichever one you're using you want to measure one and three quarter inches from this edge and you're going to cut in three quarters of an inch so let me just get a piece of paper in there So if I lift this up, can you see on the tr on the gar on the track you've got these measurements? So they're inch measurements. So what you're going to do ooh, is you're going to line up, and the blade has got like a little line on it, and you're going to line that up at three quarters of an inch and cut up. And I always do that. I always cut up so that you know you're in the right place. So look at your card and work out which is the top and which is the bottom. This is going to be the top because I don't want my leaves going upside down. So I'm going to put it in at one and three quarter inches. I'm going to line up my blade at three quarters of an inch. I'm going to press it into the paper and slide up. And it's just giving me this little cut. Yeah. And then if you flip it over, are you going to do exactly the same? So one and three quarter inches. Line it up at three quarters of an inch. And cut. And that is all the cutting and scoring and stuff that you need. So you've got these two pieces that are cut. And then all you're going to do is just fold this piece of card. You want a card, it's paper. You want to make sure that the bottom edge is lined up. You're just going to give it a little squish. Use your bone folder to reinforce the fold. Flip it over and fold it the other way. Um, because... This is actually going to get tucked inside the card. So you need sharp, crisp folds. So you're going to do exactly the same with this one. So you've now got, and you'll be able to see, if I just fold that in, you can see that you've got the right shape. But what you're actually going to do is open up the card and push these pieces in. So the sleeve, that wants to be a valley fold. So that's going that way. This is making a mountain. Can you see? Making a mountain fold. And that flops down like that. And then the same with this one. So you've got a valley fold there. But this long piece that you've cut makes a mountain fold and down there like that. Uh, 
and then all you're going to do is fold over the collar and then fold over the collar to match on the other side and then we're going to make the belly band and the inside piece so the belly band can be as big or as little as you want it to be about an inch is what i've got here and i would say a little bit over six inches to go around so what you want to do is to put it onto your card even it even up eat <laughs> oh dear put it so the sides are fairly even and then just bend it around to the back now what you don't want is you don't want this so tight you can't get it off you just want it to kind of hold it hold it together without squashing it really tightly so just put a little bit of glue just there Who? this glue i left lying on its side um I always keep my glue stored upside down. Brian made this little stand for me. So, you know, failing that, putting it in a cup or a glass. Um, but it's always better if you store the glue upside down. Um, so just going to overlap that. Then I use this beautiful fine art ribbon so this ribbon is in the annual catalogue and it's like a linen like a linen thread but it's shot through with gold um it's very pretty so i'm going to turn this upside down we'll tie it upside down um this is one of my bow tricks if you tie things upside down you can make it so that the tails of the ribbon go the way you want them to go i don't understand the science it's it just works so right over left left over right and then i'm going to pull i want my tails to go down that way and then that gives the beautiful kimono belt now a true kimono would have the tie at the back <laughs> but it's prettier to have it at the front so you know and i appreciate these are sort of quite feminine in their colors and their pattern but you could easily make a masculine version of this um and i'm just i've got a little glue dot and I'm just sticking it at the back so that the ribbon doesn't move. And then I just want a piece of card to go inside there. And I know the measurement because um, I did one a little while ago. And it's two and a half by three and a half. So we'll just get that to go inside like so okay so if um like michelle's version if you want to make a bookmark um what michelle's used is this lovely punch here um which is let's see what it's called It is called the Delightful Tag Topper Punch. Um, and that's a couple of inches 
wide and then it's tied a ribbon in that and the stamps that she's used i did mention this last week but these are such cool stamps you need to you need to see them again da, 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 da. it's called in the moment and it's a this stamp set so it's on page 57 of the january to june mini but look you've got a lady sat in a window my favorite lady uh, with a glass of wine, my other favorite <laughs> lady with a book and a puppy and a cup of coffee. Actually, that's got to be my favorite. So, although she's got socks on, which is, <laughs> which is not, not always me, but yeah, that's really cool. So let me just bring this last piece in to show you there we go Ooh. just slide it in and then as I said all I did with with the base was I just pulled it out a little bit just so that it it would stand um, you might have to work on the belly band to kind of the height wise for it to it to work but there you go so a really really simple card um obviously you could if you wanted to you could mount that on the front of a card um as opposed to making making it the whole card um you can change it up with the different types of papers or you know obviously like this one i've made it out of cardstock you could stamp it and so on so many different things that you could do um let's have a look so lorraine is asking do we know if there are any plans to release the paper pumpkin kit that complements the New Horizons collection? I'm not aware of that, Lorraine. I don't know which paper pumpkin it was. Um, and for those of you that don't know, Paper Pumpkin is a subscription service that's stamping up run in North America. And basically, you get a kit in the post every month. And we get some of them, but not all of them. Um, so I haven't heard about any new releases. But what I will do is I will write myself a note, Lorraine. Um, and I will check um all i can do is is check to see which it is and then obviously if it comes through then obviously i will let you you know um so okay but the thing is obviously we always get them much later <laughs> than anyone than than anywhere else so um but i will keep an eye out for it okay thank you Susie and Margaret and Roz and Michelle. Um, Donna's saying the paper definitely makes it look a million dollars. Yeah, I mean, the, the paper is perfect for this, um, this particular style. But think about all the different pattern papers that you have and, and different things that you could use. Michelle used the... Um, no i've forgotten what it's called i want to say it was hand penned isn't it this is hand penned this is in the current catalog which is really beautiful um so that's that's good lorraine's saying that the paper pumpkin kit is a new one okay so there's a possibility then we'll have a look <laughs> Janet says she's a bird brain, but she thinks she'll be able to do this. Bless you, Janet. Um, it is very, very straightforward. It, it really is. 
Um, thanks, Margaret. <laughs> um, lots of thanks. I'm so pleased. Honestly, I'm so pleased that you've enjoyed it. And thank you very much for Michelle for making us this original one in the first place. Because I've, you know, I've not seen anything like that. So love it. Um, okay, so that is all from me today. I will be back here next Tuesday. Now I know that you'll be wanting to see new products and all sorts of things. I will warn you now, we can't order anything till the 1st of April, which means with Easter and everything else going on, you're probably not going to see any new products from me till the middle of April. Um, so that's fine because there is so much in this book that we haven't even looked at yet let alone all of the fancy folds and things that I've got to show you. So we've got lot, plenty, plenty to be going on with. But please, 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 if you have got favourite things in the annual catalogue, check tomorrow to see if they're leaving the catalogue. I do not want you sad that you haven't been able to get things. OK, so um, the retired list goes live at 7 p.m. UK time. Um, and the fastest way to look at anything is online. Um, obviously, that's what everybody's going to be doing. So don't be surprised if the website is a bit slow or a bit glitchy because um, you've got thousands upon thousands of demonstrators trying to download a catalogue at the same time. So potentially be patient. Things sell out. There'll be discounts, um, but there won't be discounts on everything. So it's just a magical mystery tour tomorrow. Um, but I will be around to be able to answer questions and emails and so on. So thank you so much for joining me and I will see you all back here next week. Take care till then. Goodbye.